Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at uh, the new beta version of Cure and specifically adaptive layering, which they've added to this version. So, the first thing we need to do is actually enable adaptive layering. So, it's not enabled by default because it's an experimental feature of the beta. So, to enable that, what we do is we go up here to Preferences, click on Preferences at the top, then Configure Cura, and then down here to Settings. And now, one of the things to note, this is where you add all the goodness, if you didn't know it, to Cura. So, it's got tons of built-in features, and out of the box, they just kind of give you the stock standard basic. But in here, you can go and by clicking these, as you see, I've got a number click. You can add a ton of additional features to really allow you to shape uh, your G code. So, what we're going to do here, just to make this easy, I'm going to type ADA and then this is going to filter uh, for adaptive layering. You see it's under experimental. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click these boxes. Now, one of the things, uh, yours may have black eyes next to them. That simply means it wasn't selected. So go ahead and select these four boxes, uh, even if they have black eyes next to them. Uh, that just indicates that, that its base function had not been previously selected. So we're going to click close to add these. And then what's going to happen is we're going to scroll down in the control pane. And then we notice we now have a box called experimental. And if your box isn't expanded, you can just click the chevron over here and it'll expand it. And you may have to click this to turn adaptive layering on. I've already been playing with mine, obviously, so you can uh, understand it's already active. So it might be a little bit different, but you'll get these three boxes. And these three boxes are what I want to talk about. So the first box here is for the uh, maximum variation. Now, this is from the base height to the final height in millimeters uh, that, that it can actually adaptively change throughout the print. So kind of important. So this is from minimum to maximum total in the print. While the next one is actually from layer to layer. So let's say you go from layer 14 to layer 15. This is how much it can change between those two layers. Uh, and, and obviously it's going to stair step this between the variable above it and you can kind of see how they kind of stage that. Now the final variable is sort of a, what I call a fudge factor variable being a programmer myself. Uh, I did a little bit of reading on the forums about this and the developer really packed all this into this beta in about four weeks of work. So you know excellent job in such a short period of time but one of the things that he did is add this fudge factor to kind of help users fine-tune their print if you will. So what does it say here? This threshold determines whether to use a smaller layer or not based upon the number compared to the tangent of the steepest slope in a layer. Woo, there's a little math magician there uh, going on. But the sort of the point is, is depending upon the slope of the object as it's moving into it, it will determine if it can go to a a larger layer, you know, taller layer or a smaller layer to make those steps. And so this allows us to provide some fine tuning to our model in the end. So one of the things I want to take a look at is with this settings, just as it is out of the box, you notice that this chest pawn, which is this is Chuck, Chuck Hellebuck's chest pawn. Uh, if I look at this and I can see here the statistics of what it's going to be to print this. And you can see it takes 21 minutes. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this off and then I'm going to let it re-slice based upon uh, not having the adaptive layering turned on. So when it re-slices as it's doing now, you notice it jumps to 35 minutes. Now let's, let's really take a look at some of these numbers. So you'll notice that infill basically drops in half from three to, from six, from three to six or basically increases by 50%. Let me put it better that way because we started with the adaptive layered version. So you see that uh, we on infill and inner walls, it's now taking twice the amount of time because obviously it has a substantially greater number of layers that it has to make. And the same thing going down through all these, except for basically skin, because skin is, is going to be a, you know, a lateral or horizontal movement, if you will. So again, I think you can do some really interesting things with the settings in the adaptive layering. And as you can see, you, you can come up with a substantial speed difference in creating your print. 
Now, the next big question is what about quality? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up two prints and I'm going to kind of push the envelope a little bit more because uh, instead of, uh, I'm going to leave one, I'm going to leave the base one, the 35 minute as it is, uh, be, you know, short printing uh, at a layer height of 0.1 and actually I'm going to change this. I want this to be 0 0.2 just to kind of tune this if I get this right. Alright, so 0 0.2 and again I'm going to leave everything else pretty much the way it is. And then for the next one what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn, turn on uh, adaptive layering and then I'm going to come down here and instead of 0 0.1 I'm going to get even a little bit more aggressive. I'm going to go 0 0.2 and then I'm going to kick this up to 0 0.5 and we get a little bit more aggressive and I'm going to leave the threshold where it is because I think that's a pretty good threshold for this pawn and so I'm going to go ahead and let it slice and see what we come up with because remember we had 21 minutes so now 17 minutes uh, to print this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send both of these models to the printer I'm going to print both and then we'll meet back at the bench and we'll take a look at the results and see if there's a significant difference or not because as we can see here it's literally like half the time to print it so let's head over to the printer let's watch a time lapse of these guys being printed and then we'll meet back at the bench Okay, welcome back to the bench. So actually I printed this out a couple times because I wanted to make sure that everything was repeating correctly. This is a rather new printer, this Delta printer that I printed this on. So I've got them here, I've got a couple sets here. I actually did it like three times, but I got two sets here. And what I want to show you guys is if we look at, can you tell which is which? So uh, I'll put, put them together and I'll zoom up in on them. And I'll try to get my finger here. I'll try to get my fingers out of the way. So when I zoom in on these, let me get them down a little bit lower so I can get them probably better focus. So I can zoom in. So I'll zoom in. Now pick which one is which. Okay. Well, if we look at the bottom, this one is the standard. This one is the adaptive layering. So one of the things, you know, um, definitely you can see where it jumped up in the layer height here versus the 10 layer height here. Uh, but also one of the things the repeatability of the strangeness in the globe portion is rather interesting because you notice we really don't have that in the 10 in the one version or point one version but we do have it and it seems to repeat itself in this for some reason uh, and you see this is rather distinct so I try tuning this out and I really couldn't. That's why I printed a number of copies to see if I could tune that out. So, whoops, I'm dropping things here. So, that's definitely some anomaly in the adaptive layering. Um, because this was the first one and this was the second one. And I still have this little bit of strangeness in the globe shape. And this is printing standard in this, this lip here. So, uh, I think I could probably tune this a little bit better on this printer. Uh, but in general, you know, it does, there, there is a little bit of difference in the existing adaptive layering functionality in this, in the way that it is slicing it. So again, I would definitely call this experimental right now. I don't think it's as good as uh, uh, Ice SL's adaptive layering and um, uh, its ability to actually set layering at, at certain levels. And that's what I'd really like to see them add is just like Ice SL, where at, at a certain level you can change the temperature, the layer thickness, uh, everything about it layer by layer by layer. And then this way you can really tailor it to the print itself. And I don't mean just adaptive because again it's looking for the, the shift here. And I think part of the problem, um, because you notice I've got a pretty good lip here. These have good lips in the adaptive layering, but repeatedly bad lips in the the in the 10 what what gives with that i don't know so it's it's definitely something in the slicer because we know the printer can actually make a, a nice um 
formation here, but again, every one I've printed in the 1.0 format comes out with this lip right here. So I, you got me something in the slicing. And then again, you know, the globe itself, except for this middle band where it's kind of switching up because if you noticed in the uh, first part of this where I kind of showed the layering, it tapers down into a finer layer to make this cone. And so what, what I think is happening here is I have a thicker layer into a thinner layer and it's not bonding very well. But yet here when I do one thin layer, I get this really oblong piece down here where it's a pretty round bottom. So this is this has been an interesting experiment and this is one of the things that I really I've gotten in a couple uh, online discussions with folks that a printer is a printer is a printer and that's one of the things I really feel because you can you can see here just in the software the difference so you know if you look at this you say oh th this this printer's crap because look at this but look at this one over here this is fine they were both printed on the same printer why is there a difference? It's the software. The software really defines your printer. The firmware that's on the printer as well as your slicing software really work to define how that printer operates. So if your printer in general is functioning as it should, you should get some pretty good prints. And if you're not getting pretty good prints, you probably really need to look to your settings. One of the things with this Delta I need to look at is is the jerk settings and acceleration. I think I need to change that. Um, I think that's where part of my problem is. And I'll probably do a future video on that. But anyways, for this video, I wanted to share this experimental adaptive layering. I think it's experimental. I think it works great if you don't have something with a lot of detail that you want to power through quickly. I think it works effectively for that. But if you have something you want to get some detail on, I would... Uh, I would probably still switch back to something like ISSL uh, if I really wanted to get some high detail and really wanted to get some quality. Ease of use, just use the standard Cura and I think you're good to go. So hopefully you found it interesting. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have some interesting Cura finds or settings, let me know in the comments below as well as are you using the new adaptive layering out of Cura and what are your results? Let me know in the comments. Swag shop, subscribe. Next video, we'll see you there. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all.